Welcome to Chapel Town, a place to know God and to make Him known, to share Christ with those who don't know Him, to be the engineer <laughs> with God's help, to show God's love, to raise the roof. God says, Go, go. To show God's love, to serve, to connect with the people of Jamaica, to be the hands of Jesus, to build relationships, to see the culture, to answer God's call. I'm Jacob Bonema, and I was honored to be the leader of this trip to Jamaica. I just love seeing our church become the hands and feet uh, of Christ. And it was so fun to see that happen through this church in Jamaica this time. My wife and I have known Pastor Raymond for many, many years. And this last spring break, we took a quick trip down with the family to spend some time with him. And when he expressed the need of his church uh, to us and that they were meeting in a building without a roof and had been for many years, uh, it just it, it, it gave me a sense of urgency. This is something that our church could be a part of. And I was so excited to talk to Pastor Eric and the Foundry leadership about this opportunity. And then to see the response, we had 14 people travel down and be a part of being literally the answer to their prayers uh, to put a roof on that church. It was a huge blessing to be a part of that. Uh, it was Operation Roof It. I was luckily had to be one of the guys on the roof because I'm just fearless, I guess. I was up there most of the time and it was really rewarding to uh, put a roof on a church that people had been earnestly praying for. For seven years they've been waiting for a roof and to see it all uh, come together and we finished it ahead of schedule, ahead of what we had anticipated, uh, it was really, really neat to see. And Yeah, it was really, really exciting to be able to get the roof done in about a day and a half and still have a lot of extra time. So we were able to pull some resources together and to be able to paint the church and to also be able to add on to the steeple portion and get a lot of that concrete work done. Today we were working on the top of this roof. Uh, it's been a lot of work, a lot of cement mixing. It's been extremely difficult and hot today, but we've got a lot done and we're really excited about it. All right, it was a great trip. There's so many stories to tell it's kind of hard to know where to start one small thing was we thought we needed a sign in front of the church and a cross so we cleared some land with machetes and shovels and whatever tools we had and there was a crazy local drunk guy who wasn't approving of that he ended up coming back with a chainsaw uh, it's, it's pretty crazy so we're cutting through all this brush and things like that and there's this trunk or this uh, stump that's in the way. Coach Neal goes, man, I really wish that we had a chainsaw like that one crazy drunk guy that came earlier. With a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> and not even five minutes later, another man come, coming down the road has a chainsaw and coach calls out to him and he's like, hey, you come cut this for us. And he comes and cuts it for us. It wasn't until really later that we realized, wow, we just asked for a chainsaw to cut this stump. and. God gave us a chainsaw just coming right down the street. And one of the experiences I'll cherish for a long time is Sunday morning when it was time for us to leave to go to church. The van wouldn't start and we've been working on it for about a half an hour trying to get it started. And all of a sudden the Spirit said, Brian, lay hands on the car and pray for it. And I yelled at everybody, come over here and let's pray for the car. And after that, within a few minutes, it started right up and we made it to church in time where we had a wonderful service. Being on this trip shows, like, shows how grateful we should be because we don't see like any of that here. There's not as much bad. And I would say going into the trip, I kind of wanted to see God and as many said, see God in different ways. And I was really looking for that moment. And one of the nights we prayed and we kind of did a little testimony and I kind of was saying how I'd never really felt that. And the next couple days, we saw two of them. Uh, my name is Austin Bonham, and I was in charge of ministry for the trip. The Jamaica missions trip was incredible. One of the things that really stood out to me was we were at this hospital, um, praying for, for healing for the people who were at the hospital. And this one lady came up to me saying that she had had some 
problems in her knee and she couldn't walk right and so um, a bunch of the guys kind of got over her and we laid our hands on her knee and just started praying over her knee and as soon as we got done praying I got up and was like well you know check it out how does it feel and she was so amazed because she's like when you put your hand on my knee it turned ice cold and it felt like your hand was like an ice pack and then she like started putting her feet on the ground started testing it out she's like it's it's healed it's it's awesome um, a bunch of the guys were getting some waters at a, at a bar and the bartender um, started talking to her about Christ and she I was like so do you go to church and she goes yeah I go to church but I'm not going to go to heaven I was like really you go to church why, why aren't you going to go to heaven she goes the people at my church won't allow me to become a Christian because I have piercings and tattoos I was like well just because you have piercings and tattoos doesn't disown you from the kingdom of heaven and so she, she's like, really? I can, I can become a Christian? I was like, yeah, you can become a Christian. And so then she prayed to receive Christ that night. And now we've been discipling. We got her in touch with the pastor. And she's going to um, a, a right church now. We were also able to uh, take some time and visit the, the local hospital. We spent some time praying for a lot of the people there that were hurting and, and sick. One experience was um, we met a guy by the name of Nicholas. Nicholas was really struggling that day, not so much with uh, pain and hurt um, in his, with his body. Um, he was actually there because he had an altercation with his sister who um, chopped at his hand and he was there to get his hand bandaged. But the main reason we were praying for him was he was struggling personally. His parents had been killed two, uh, three years ago and um, he was struggling to either take his own life or for revenge against the people who took his parents from him. And he was really struggling. Um, the entire team began praying with him over top of him and just prayed for the spirit to be within, with him. And we just continue today to pray that he will be saved and reach out to Raymond um, moving forward in his life. I know. I know, but listen, you are here. As tough as it is, you are here. Think about it. It's tough, but you are here. God has kept you because you could have gone like them. There's a reason that God has kept you. There's a reason you are here today. There's a reason we have come to be able to say, Nicholas, you are for a special purpose. And God is going to work out His purpose in your life, man. Give Him strength. Rise above it. Rise above it. Rise. You can rise above it. You can rise above it. You can look back in years to come in that situation and say, I saw my life went through. I could have gone under. I could have been in the grave. I lost my mother. I lost my father. I lost all. But here I am. Here I am. Because of Jesus. You will do it. You'll make it. You'll never be the same again. Never be the same. And at the hospital, I had the opportunity to uh, pray for a young girl, a 21 year old. Uh, her name was Karja, and she was just there not feeling very well. And I prayed, and I learned a lot about what the power of prayer and the power that we possess as Christians that um, through the Holy Spirit uh, Jesus has given to us. Um, and I prayed that she would just feel better and be healed and not even have to go into um, to go see a doctor. As we were praying over Nicholas as a team, after I got done praying with her, I saw her walk out. Her face was smiling and she waved at me. She was leaving. And I took that as God answered my prayer directly. I had never experienced the Holy Spirit like that and the healing power that we possess. And it's just amazing. And it's an untapped power, I think, that a lot of us uh, don't really realize. So we were in the town of Maypen getting dinner and a famous pastor named Pastor Kevin wanted to go and pray for the town in the town circle. We start to sing some Christian songs. As we're holding hands and praying and singing songs, me and Gabe spot this, this woman with, and she was, she was just not, she was walking and kind of dancing and just not normal, almost like a snake-like. Then she comes and she breaks open our circle. She's yelling stuff and we can't really understand her and she's rolling the eyes in the back of her head, kind of not human-like. He said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, be gone. He stuck his hand out and right as he did that, you could just see 
Her eyes rolled back and she did not like that at all. She starts to kind of dance really weirdly and just not human-like and she was she started to unclothe herself and then Pastor Kevin goes again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be gone. We started praying we just got around a circle and started praying we had Pastor Kevin he pulled in actually another pastor that was on the street and then uh, Austin Bonomo started praying it was really powerful it was a really passionate prayer just praying for the city of Maypen because they're really hurting and there's a lot of bad things going on there so it's a really cool experience to see that. One of my favorite things about leading missions trips is just watching God move in each of the participants' lives in a whole new way, in ways they never experienced. Uh, I saw over and over on this trip too, uh, a lot of people don't think that they can be used by God in the ways that they experience on these trips. And so when they experience it for the first time, it really is life-changing. And I've never had someone say, I wish I didn't go on this trip. I've always seen people many times say, I wish I've done this sooner in my life. I was at a point where I like, wasn't sure if I wanted to go or whatever. I prayed, asking if I should go, and the Lord made it pretty clear pretty quick that I should go, and I'd go back a hundred times over. Yeah, I believe that the Lord has changed my life a lot through this trip. Um, he showed himself to us many times uh, while we were there and it was, a, it was a special time. I learned a lot of patience on this trip. Um, patience for when things don't tend to go the way that they're meant to go. Um, God taught me a lot of patience from the beginning of the trip, even prior and up until today, and I'm hoping that this continues in my life. I think the really cool thing about missions trips is not only do you impact the people's lives in that culture, but then your life is also impacted as well. The, the concept of, of missions has absolutely flipped my life upside down and caused me to live a, a life completely for Christ. And so if you're challenged to, to go on a missions trip, I, I implore you with that, and because you are able and you are equipped to do it, to do the, the will that God has for you. It's been a wonderful privilege all my life to do the various mission trips. It was especially great to do this mission trip because we had so many young men with us, and it excites us to see that there is young Christians out there that are willing to serve the Lord. You know, we're grandparents, but that's not gonna stop us from serving the Lord. And anyone, if you, if you can push a broom, you can go on a mission trip. And we would just love to see more people help spread the gospel across the world. Founder, I just wanna thank you so much for what you invested in the hearts and minds of this church body in Jamaica. Uh, it was incredible uh, what we accomplished together with your prayers, with your support, and with your financial support. Uh, the, the hands were busy and the work was hard and, uh, and you would be so proud of your team. They did a great job and we can't wait to go on the next trip. So if you've ever thought about going on a missions trip, I hope you do with us because we are absolutely excited about getting back there and continuing what we started. Jamaica 2.0 is on the horizon and I hope that if God's speaking to you about being a part of it, that you'll answer that call and be a part of that with us.